Good afternoon, everybody. Yes. So we got uh, <clears throat> no arch and no couch. couch. All right, hello. I had some trouble with my Zoom. Oh. Yeah. There you go. Hi, everybody. Hi. Hi, Sam. Yeah, it wouldn't start. You know, I just kept clicking on the thing. It wouldn't start. Um, I was going to just go and take a nap and just say, you know, bye to you guys. Like, my Zoom is not working. <laughs> but I kept trying. Okay. All right, Lane, where are we at? What did we do the last time? Uh, I don't remember which question. Uh, I don't you don't remember? Whoa. I think we were talking about, about rice, Lane. Oh, I thought you, you asked me which <laughs> question we did. OK. <laughs> yeah, so what question did we do? Let's see. I think fourth one, we have to do fourth question. Okay, let me share my screen and let's look at it. So, question, chapter eight. Okay, so. Fourth one, four. Okay, number four. All right, so, um, Anjuman, you wanna try number four? You have a scenario where you need to disable. You need to disable the guest network on your wireless router. You need to disable the guest network on your wireless router. You try to log in, but your password does not work. After several attempts, you realize that you forgot your password. Well, so it's saying... Um, so you're trying to disable the guest network, mm. the guest network on your wireless router. You want to disable it, disable. What does it mean to disable? <laughs> uh, Anjuman, what does that mean? To disable something? <laughs> Anjuman, are you there? Yes, I am there. So what does it mean to disable, what does that mean? Disable, disable the guest network. Disable, uh, it's not uh, connected, not working. Okay, you want to stop it from working, exactly. You want to stop it from working. Okay, so you try to log in, but your password does not work. After several attempts, you realize that you forgot your password. What can you do? So let's go and look at, Let's look at what it says about uh, wireless routers here. Wireless routers. 
Okay. So. So the wireless router. Um, so let me show you this image here. All right, so have you guys seen this before? Like if you go into an office building or into, you know, Dunkin' Donuts or you're going to, you know, one of those stores, you might see up on the ceiling, maybe if you pay attention, you might see on the ceiling um, some, we call them access points, right? If you go into a building, or you go into a restaurant or you go to the airport or somewhere like that, on the ceiling, you're going to see these little devices. Maybe there's a little green light or a little blue light or something on those devices. Uh, those devices are what we call access points or wireless routers, right? You see them up on the ceiling. Has anybody seen any of this yes. on the ceiling? Yes. Okay. So that's how you get wireless when you're in a building, you know, at the school, on the job, in a public place. That's how you get wireless on your phone, on your laptop. Okay. Now at home, your wireless router at home does, you know, uh, what's called home router. So your router at home is kind of similar in what it does. So, you know, most of us have some kind of a, you know, router at home, right? So your router at home or your, um, what was it? What's the picture I looked at? Yeah, something like this. So in a public building or at home, kind of like the same thing he's talking about here, a wireless router. So in, um, in IT, we refer to it as an access point, right? The word, uh, that term access point. So an access point is any point that allows a user on a network. So the term is referred to with a wireless access point, right? So you might notice that if you're in a public building, if you're close to the wireless router, even at home maybe, right? If you're too far away from the router, your signal might be kind of low. Sometimes you have to get closer, right, to the router to get a better signal. Um, so, uh, talking about a wireless access point, it lets users connect to the network, uh, through the 802.11 technology. Um, now the 802.11 technology is a, a group of, shall I say, um, how do I call it now? It's like rules that were developed, right? Let me let me pull this up. Um, say Ethernet. Um, okay, so uh, this company here, well, not a company. It's a it's a nonprofit, the IEEE, right? Uh, the IEEE is, just give me one second here. All right. So this, this group, right, known as the Institute of Electrical and Electronic Engineers, right, they are the professional organization, right, that come up with the rules, the rules that determine how we use um, some Ethernet technology, right? Especially when it comes to wireless, right? They come up with the rules. Just like, you know, you might have fire and safety rules. You might have rules co governing how you build a house, right? Uh, you might have safety rules uh, for insurance for cars. You know, you have all these different rules from different professional organizations, right? So, the IEEE, um, the Institute of Electrical and Electronic Engineers, 
look, look let's look, okay, let's look at uh, Wikipedia here. Uh, not this one. Let's look at Wikipedia's like definition. So right here it says the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers, IEEE, that's how you call it. You say IEEE is a professional association for electronic engineering and electrical engineering. Uh, the office in New York City. Uh, let me come up with their, uh, let's see, where are all their rules here, or their publications? Okay, you know what, well, let me just jump ahead because I don't want to spend too much time. Let me jump ahead and say IEEE um, 802.11 specs. Okay. All right. Okay, so the 802.11, right, is a part of, let's look at this one here. Sorry, I'm jumping around. Just give me a second here. Go away. Okay. So this group, the IEEE, right, they come up with different, um, shall I say, specifications or publications Right of how you know different parts of the Ethernet work. Now, if you look specifically at 802.11, 802.11 talks about the rules for wireless technology. Okay, 802.11. Actually, um, just a side note: this 802 right here, 802. You might be wondering, how did they come up with, what is 802, what does 802 mean? 802 refers to 1980 and February, right? 802, 80, 1982, the second month. 802 was when they had this big meeting, right, in February of 1980, and they came up with all these different rules and specifications, right? So... That's what 802 refers to, 802. Now they have a lot of different specifications. They have one, you know, they have two, three, like you can see here, right? 802.5, 0.6, 0.7, 0.8, 0.9, 0.10. What we're concerned about is 802.11, wireless, okay? A lot of the rules for wireless. That's what he's talking about here, right? The 802.11 technology refers to the rules that, um, that govern how we manage wireless technology. Kind of make sense? Does it make sense to you guys? Oh, it might not make too much sense, but just trying to give you the background of how we come up with some of these things. All right? So they have a whole lot of different specifications here. Um, I think the Ethernet itself. It's not Internet. Ethernet. You know, I've showed you guys... Uh, the Ethernet cables and everything, right? The Ethernet cables. This Ethernet, um, the rules, the rules that govern Ethernet cables and everything, that is under 802.3, right? Look at that. Um, 802.3 is a working group and a collection of IEEE standards produced by the working group defining the physical layer and data link layer, right? that control the wired ethernet, wired ethernet, wires and all that, all that kind of stuff, right? So, like I told you guys, if you take this course in a proper college setting, you go into more details, right? So, let's move on. So that's how we come up with this kind of technology or this kind of, you know, uh, 802.11. It's all, you know, it's, it's, um, it's a specification or a, or a set of rules that determine how wireless works, okay? All right, so wireless access points, uh, what's it say here, may connect to other wireless access points or routers. In a large building, you're gonna have a lot of wireless access points, right? Because just one is not enough to cover the whole building. So you need to have multiple, right? Sometimes along the hallway, you're gonna see uh, quite a few of them along the hallway. Uh, let me see. Uh, 
hallway. Let's see if we see. Yeah, so something like this. Uh, Yeah, you might see like somewhere up here, you know, if you're in, depends on the building you are, you're going to see a few of them, right? Scattered around the building just to give enough coverage, right? One wireless router, it only goes so far. So you have to have a lot of them in a very large building so you can serve everybody, right? One access point cannot cover everybody, all right? Okay. So like we said, I think the last class, right, a router itself, right, a router, the job of a router is to um, send information from one network to another network, right? The router, like we, look, we looked at that already, right? A uh, router, where is it? I showed you this picture. So we looked at this picture, Right, and we said that um, you know this cylindrical devices, the shapes are routers. Routers are act are computers. They're not actually round. They're just like standard computers, really. Maybe much bigger in size. But the job of the router is like your post office, right? It moves information from your network, which might be your home or your office. Right, it moves that information, that email you're sending from your network to a totally different network on the outside. So, for example, if you are sending me an email, well, there's a router, you know, there's a router whose job it is to route that information to the correct network. It might not just be one router, there might be many routers along the way. Just like if I was going to send a letter from Boston to Florida. It may not go directly to Florida. There might be, you know, several post offices along the way that are going to take the package, send it along. So something like that is how um, routers also work. Okay. So uh, let's see some more here about wireless routers. Yes. Uh, so that's a wireless router, like we said, that might be um, at your home, right, from Verizon or Xfinity, Fios, and stuff like that. Okay, so let's see, back to that question it was asking us. Um, have a network cable handy when setting up, when you're setting up a wireless router. So let's see the settings here. Okay. Well, it's given us all the steps here about how to set up um, a wireless right, right there, how to set up a wireless router. Um, yeah, there are a few steps, but you know, most most people don't set up their wireless. You know, Xfinity comes to your house and just puts it in for you. Here's your username. Here's your password. Right. So most people don't set it up. But if you work, if you work in IT, your job might be to set up a wireless router. That might be your job. Or you might work with a company where you have to help them do that, right? So here is giving you a lot of steps you have to take. It says um, five critical steps when you are setting up a wireless router. You change the SSID, right? And Juman, what's the SSID again? Uh, SSID. Um, yes, I have S SSID. What is the SSID? What is the SSID? Mm -hmm. May, what's the SSID? Uh, May, what's SSID? Come on, guys. Your internet ID. <laughs> The internet ID is SSID? Your name, network name. Exactly. The name of the of your router, the name of your wireless access point. Yeah, I mean, right? Yeah. Something like this. Yeah. Oh, man. 
you know, like, you know, whatever the name is, you're going to see that you can click on it and connect to it. So that's the SSID. All right. So when you're setting up your wireless router, you change the uh, SSID, you change the administrator username and password, right? Um, you enable. So right here, these are security options, right? These are security options. And WPA2, which stands for WPA um, and WPA2, that is wireless protected access, right? So WPA2 is the latest version. It's a much stronger than um, WPA. So it's part of the settings when you're, you know, changing all the settings. You have to set it to WPA2, right? So it says that right here, um, WPA2 with uh, AES encryption. You choose a high quality security passphrase, right? Password. Um, it says from the clients, select WPA2 and enter the security passphrase. So this is all the steps when you're connecting your, when you're trying to set up your wireless router. And then all the steps, accept the license, accept the license agreement. Um, you connect the router. Has anyone here connected a router before by yourself? Any, any of you guys? May, did you connect the router yourself? May? No. Uh, and Juman, did you connect the router before yourself? Uh, yes, we connected in our country, Bangladesh. Uh, we have a router, uh, but I didn't connect it. It connect um, my husband. I we have. A, we Has have anybody a... done it yourself before? Like you did it yourself? Anybody? I don't remember if I had to do it myself. I just uh, took the router and uh, put the uh, Ethernet cable on it. Did you change the password and all that stuff? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I changed the SSID and the password. Yeah, so that's it. That's part of setting up the wireless, right? That's all the steps he's describing here. It's going to tell you, okay, now we are setting up your router and stuff like that, okay? And then you do the configuration. You know, just it's not very complicated. You just have to go through all these different steps. Okay. Uh, sometimes if you call the company, they can walk you through, you know, what to do, stuff like that. All right. And of course, the way you know your setup is if you can connect. So that's what it's describing here. Uh, just all the basic steps that you go through. Especially, uh, especially the security um, settings, WPA2. Okay. Okay, okay, that's what he said here. Actually, this is what we just talked about here. WPA2 is the best option, right? Because that's the, that's the security standard that is attached to wireless um, access point devices. Okay. So let's go back to that question and let's see what the question was again. So let's see if we can figure out what it is. Um, so you're trying to disable the guest network on your wireless router. You try to log in, but you can't. Password doesn't work. After several attempts, you realize you forgot your password. What can you do? So you can use the password reset option, unplug the router, use the default password of the administrator, or hold the reset down for 30 seconds? Let's just look at the answer, because I don't want us to spend so much time on just well, going through you, all those many steps. Can you say, uh, what is a guest network? Okay, good question. Okay, 
So, good question there. So, let's go here. Okay, I, I, you know, you know the best thing for me to show you guys here. Let me show you if I can find it. Let me show you this here. I think I have it from another class. Give me one second. Where is it? Um, I had something that can give you guys an idea. You know what? Give me one second. Let me get it. I think it'll be helpful. Just one second. Not that. One second. All right, the lab. Okay. All right, so I found it. So one of my uh, labs from my other other class at UMass Boston. So we have this. Let me click on this here. All right. So what? So this is kind of like you know, it's it's a it's like an interface, right, for wireless. When you're setting up wireless, it might look something like this, right? This is just a test site. If you guys are interested, I'm going to put the link in the chat. Um, let me put it right here, so you guys can always look at it later. I put the link in the chat. So. So you're going to see all these different options when you're setting up your wireless router, okay? You can see when I go on the basic, uh, actually, let me just go, go on the basic, you're going to see uh, where the settings here. All right, so you see on the wireless, right? You want to set up your wireless network. Uh, of course, you want to enable the network. So you're, you guys can see what I'm showing you. Can you guys see this? Yes. Yes. Okay. So it has all these options there. So you can see right here, I can decide to enable or disable the network. So I'm going to enable it, check the box. Um, I'm going to give it a name. So that's the SSID, right? If I say the SSID is, um, I don't know, jump in a lake, <laughs> right? If that's my SSID, who knows, right? That's my SSID. This is the 802.11 mode. I set it to automatic, right? Um, so all the different options there, the security mode that we mentioned, right? You have WPA, WPA, WPA. Uh, the best option is the WPA2. You select that option for security, okay? Then it says encryption. Encryption is what protects your wireless uh, traffic from being um, read or recognized when it's traveling. So you protect it. Um, if somebody intercepts the message, they can't read what's there because it's encrypted. So that's set up there. Um, and then you have a few more settings here. So there's the 5G option. If that's, if that's allowed on your, from your provider, you can enable the 5G option. Um, same thing with the, with the 2.4 gigahertz here. So right now it's like 5G everywhere. If 5G is enabled, like I said, most times, you know, Xfinity of, of Verizon, they just set up all this stuff for you, and you don't even know what's happening. They just tell you, here's your SSID, here's your password, okay? Uh, under the password, so right here, for example, right? So there's a default password. If I click here to see what it is, this is the default password, right? Now, a lot of, a lot of wireless devices always have a default password, right? Now, you're supposed to change that password because 
if an attacker was to try to attack your your network, they're going to try to use this default password if you don't change it. Right? So you're supposed to change that default password to something else that you know. All right? Like I said, this is just this is just for, you know, just a test, but a test website, but that's that's what's going on there. You have to change the default password. Okay? Um then a few other settings there. So the question about the guest network, right? So right here we go to guest network. Now on the guest network is, let me show you. So right here, you can note, look at the options that are there to help us understand. Here are the options. So for your guest, it says prevent guests from accessing the private LAN. What does that mean? So let's say, Sam, I come to your house and I, I say, hey, what's your password? I mean, what's your wireless? And you give me your wireless password and I log in in your house. Well, I'm going to log in on the guest network. So I'm not able to access your files as a guest. Right? Only people that are on the, should I say, official network can access the files. But somebody who comes in as a, just like if you go to Dunkin' Donuts or you go to Starbucks or you go to Quincy College and you're on the wireless, you cannot access the, the files for Quincy College. You cannot access the HR department. You cannot answer, you know, access the professor's documents. No, you're on the guest, you're on a separate network. So that network does not allow you to see, it prevents you from accessing the private network files and stuff like that right then also there's this part here right isolate guests from each other so when we check this box what we're saying is let's say we're in the same classroom right like we're all physically in the same classroom on wireless if i check this box that means i'm not able to get into sam's computer alex cannot get into anu's computer may cannot get into anjuman's computer Everyone is isolated from each other. That's what this checkbox is for, right? Isolate guests from each other. So that is all under the guest network because guests are not permanent members of our network. They are not employees. They might be students, right? But they're not employees of the company, right? Or you might be at home and have some guests coming to your house. They're not part of your family. You don't want them accessing your internal files, right? Um, so you have all the different options here. For So that's what the guest network is. It's an optional network for people who don't really, really belong in the company or at the school or something. They're just passing through, right? So that's what it's asking us here about, uh, what's that question now? About disabling, or oh, what's it here? Yeah, so it says you have a scenario where you need to disable the guest network, right? That's what we just talked about. You don't want that. You just want to kill the net. You don't want anyone, you know, you don't want to have any guest network or anything. Maybe you don't need it. You know, you can decide you want everyone to be on the regular network. That's totally up to whoever is setting it up, right? But right here it says you have the option to configure the guest network. So right here, if we check this box, we enable the guest network. If we uncheck the box, then it's not enabled, right? So, so that's what this question is about. Now, with this example, all you have to do is check a box, right, to enable or disable it. But here it looks like you have a few other options of what you can do. You have to log in and stuff like that with the password. Okay? Sam, you're muted. Um, okay, I'm just reading. I'm muted. Really? I'm not muted. Yeah, I can hear you now. I hear you now. Okay. I hear you now. Um, no, I'm just reading reading the options um, to myself. And um... so, if we if we go to the answer, we'll see what the answer is. Let's just go to the answer. So, Appendix B, Question Eight, Number Four. 
Okay, so right here, Anjuman. Yes. It says wireless routers uh, have a reset button. You know, the you know at the back or somewhere, right? Like a little button you can just click to reset it. Press and hold the button for about thirty seconds. In fact, I do this myself sometimes when my wireless is being funny. Or you call Comcast and they tell you, you know, press that button for, you know, a few seconds. It will reset it. It says it will reset it to factory specs. Now, if you never change the password, then using the admin would work. But I'm hoping you change the password, right? So D is the answer there. And D is question eight. Uh, so D is, so the question is, uh, after several attempts, you realize you forgot the password. So if you forget the password, while you're trying to disable the guest network, just do this option here. Hold the reset button for 30 seconds to reset the router. Yes. Okay. All right. Let's move on. May. Uh, question for you, number five. Mm -hmm. On Monday, you log into your computer at work, but you are not able to access any network. You have no, no connections, nothing. You run IP config. We did this the other day, right? You run IP config and see that your IP address is 169.254.18.53. May, do you see this? You see this period at the end, right? There's no period at the end of an IP address. Oh, okay. This period is just because this sentence is the end of the sentence. Okay. So it's not part of the IP address. It's just the only three dots there. 169.254.18.53. This last one here is because the sentence has ended. Okay. Make sense? Mm-hmm. All right. So you run IP config. You see your you see your IP address. Um, so what is the most likely cause of the problem? Why you don't have any any network access? May. Mm. I I have no idea. Uh, I think it is the uh, NAT. Network C. Server is down. The NAT server? It's down. Oh, it is. Uh, All right, so. Yes. It yep. is the DHCP server is down. <laughs> so the DNS server, that is for, you know, the, D the DNS server is for websites, right? To find the IP address of a website. You guys remember that? We talked about that, right, the last time? DNS. So it's like a, what, database? Database of websites and IP, IP addresses. Okay? That's DNS. So that wouldn't, that wouldn't be the problem here. Your DHCP, I know the DHCP is what? DHCP. His job is to what? To give you IPs, right? The DHCP server gives you IP, gives you your IP addresses. Um, NAT. NAT is what? Network address translation. Private to public. public private to public right and the default default gateway router. that is uh router. that is the router the router right the router that is your network router your network router okay so when we look at this here, what's the mostly may, what's the most 
likely um, answer here, right? It says that you know DNS is for databases and web, you know websites and IP address. Mm-hmm. Um, DHCP gives you IP addresses. Network address translation that changes your IP from private to public or public to private, and your default gateway is your network router. So the question is, you're not able to access any network resources. You run IP config, and you can see your IP is 169.254.18.63. And yes, so. Okay. So, hang on. So, what do you think it is? Yeah, I, I think it's C. You think it's C? Yeah. Um, the NAT server is down. Mm-hmm. Because this one here. Yeah. Why is it going to be there? What What does it have to do with network address translation? But um, but already have the IP address, but right? but we what okay. Do you think is- so. So let me show you something here. So you see this IP address? I think we should talk about this right now. Let's talk about this IP address because, yeah, I'll try to you know get as much as, as as much detail for you guys as possible. So IP addresses. Uh, last week, uh, uh, sorry, the last class we talked about IP addresses are not random, right? They're not just random numbers. Number one. Um, they are not random numbers because they look like one six five two five three dot. They're like, what is that? Okay, number two, uh, they have. Shall I say? Oh, O R I E S categories. IP address. IP addresses are grouped. They are grouped in into categories right they are grouped or what we call what we call classes right ip addresses are grouped into classes or categories now let's see if the book has something about that here let's see Let me see if it has that info here. IP. Let's go and see if we have it. Oh, wait a minute. Okay. One second. I'm not sure it has the information we're looking for, but let me just keep looking at it here. Okay, right here. Okay, public and private IPs. Public and private IPs. I don't think that information is here. Oh. Okay, it doesn't have that info here. So how are we gonna talk about this? Okay, you know what? Let me show you this here. Okay, so let me see if this is better here.
Let's use this one. Just give me one second. I'm trying to help. I want to get this clear. Okay, let's use this one. I think this might this might work. Um, why am I even seeing everything here? Okay. If you guys can see this a little bit small, for some reason, I know this website is um, kind of messing up here. It's big enough. Okay, it's big enough. Okay. So IP addresses, right, are divided into like five classes. The most, the most important is class A, class B, and class C, right? Okay, so here's some things, to, some things we should know. Um, so remember, uh, we said the IP addresses are in like four blocks, right? So you have something like dot, 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 right? So in here, you can have a number from zero to 255. Each of those, um, should I say octets, right? Each of those four blocks, you can have numbers from 0 to 255 right that's just that's the rule that's how it's it's all set up what it means is that you can have 255 computers in a network right that's what it means you can have 255 computers with ip addresses in a network that is that is the that is the size of a LAN, like the, that is the, should I say, the maximum limit of the size of a LAN, the maximum, right? 255 computers. Now you can have a WAN made up of a lot of LANs, right? Like look, wide area network, but a local area network can be as much as 255 computers, okay? Zero to 255. All right, so, so each of those computers can have a unique IP address, right? So your IP address, now let, look at this. So the first part, so there are four parts, right? There's part one, part two, part three, and part four, right? So this first part here, part one here, part two, or should I say block one, block two, block three, block four, right? So the first part, Actually, the first part is your network. This is also your network here. Okay, uh, this is your subnet, and this is the host. Okay, now let me explain what that is. Couch, are you bored? Like, <laughs> oh, this I'm tired. No, no. I need to go. I need to. I need to go and sleep. <laughs> this is boring. No, you no, know, no, no, well, because last night I didn't well, get any sleep. <laughs> okay. I, I need more sleep myself. Okay. Now, think about this, right? So when you see an IP address, the IP address might look like, you know, um, you know, one, one nine two dot, you know, 32.45.6, something like that, right? For example. Okay. Something like that. Now, the first part of that IP address, that is like the 192, and the second part, those first two parts tell you of the network. It's kind of like the zip code, right? It gives you an idea of the zip code, the geographical region, right? The geographical area where that IP address is. Like, something like that, right? It gives you an idea of the physical, the physical geographical region, right? Now, the third part, so the 192.32 will tell you where you're going to find that IP address, like what part of the country, what part of the state, what part of the world, where is it coming from? Now, the 45, that is the third part, number three, that's a subnet. Now, what is a subnet? A subnet is, it's like, this is my favorite explanation of a subnet. It's like a pizza. 
Now, what, 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 do, what do I mean by a pizza? When you, so here's a pizza, right? When you're going to eat it, when you buy a pizza, when you're going to eat a pizza, you have to slice it up into different slices, right? Like different slices. You don't put the whole pizza in your mouth at once. <laughs> you got to cut it up into little sizes. So when you have a big network, you have to break your network into little parts like the HR department, the accounting department, maybe uh, the students' government, maybe, you know, the admin, you know, whatever. You break down, or you might say this sociology is going to be here, nursing department is on the other side, then you have maybe IT is on the other side. You break the network into smaller parts. So that if one subnet, something goes wrong, it doesn't destroy the whole um, network, right? So a subnet helps you to manage a large network, right? A subnet, it's like a smaller part of the big network. So, for example, if this IP address, if you had another IP address that was something like this, say this is 40, uh, 46, right? Lynn, if you see this IP address, now you can see 192.32, 192.32, 192.32, they belong to the same network, mm -hmm. like the same company, like the same company or the same college, right? The yeah. same company. But the third part here, that's the subnet, this part here, you can see this is 45, yeah. this is 45, this is 46. Yeah. This one, 46, that's a subnet. The same company, but a different, maybe like a different, it's just called a subnet, right? Mm. Maybe for, you know, security reasons, or you have to separate that department or whatever, that's a subnet. So you can have, you can have subnets in a network. If you have something like this, uh, Close this here. You have this as, you know, seven. Then you have another one. Let's say this is 47, something like that. If you see this, if the third part or the, the third block is different, right, the same network, 192.32, 192.32, all these guys here are different, then those are subnets. Okay? Now, the last part, the last block is the host. What is the host? What's the host? Anybody? The host means what? The main, the main network. Server? Yep. Sure. Nope. It is the, uh, the, the host network. is the host is each each computer. Each computer is a host. So, for example. If we're all, you know, if this is a company, this host, uh, 45.6, that is somebody's computer. This might be, I don't know, Jane, right? That's Jane's computer, uh, dot seven. This might be somebody else, say, um, I don't know, Peter, right? It's that, the host is a unique computer, oh. right? You are never, you're never going to get the same host, like, you know, Something like this, never gonna happen. Every host is different. So the last part, the host is, is should I say, individual it's a device name. Uh, computers. Mm -hmm. Individual computers. Got it. So, so this is the <laughs> network, this is the subnet, and this is the, the individual computer. Mm -hmm. oh. So, so if, if you have, so uh, if go, ahead, a, go ahead, if, go ahead, Sam. Uh, sorry, if it's a home computer, uh, what will the subnet represent? If it's a home computer, you're probably not going to have a subnet. It's just one network, right? Uh, I mean, there will be no reason to divide a home with five people into two, except right. there was some kind of activity going on. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so you have to be. Creative. I mean, you have to be very creative. Yeah, I mean, there will be no need for that. 
you know, but yeah, so there could what, what, be so, special so circumstances. In, so in that case, you have fewer numbers in the in the IP address, or uh, so just... if it was at home, if it was at home, then you could have, you know, something like this at home, where you had uh, something like this. So you have, you know, you could have one, two, three, four, for different people, right? Different people at home. Tom, uh, Sue, and maybe um, Jan or something, right? Is it only so the same, the same, say that again? Uh, is it only computers or any device connected? No, 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 any, any, any internet connected device. Okay. I mean, your, um, your laptops, your phone, Hmm. Your phone, your laptop, your tablet, your your uh, Siri, your Alexa, your hmm. refrigerator, your everything that is connected to the internet will have a separate IP address. Yes. yes. Right. So the more devices you have, then the more hosts. Right. The more hosts you're going to have, but it's the same network the same subnet, right, for everybody, but your host is gonna be different for everybody, okay? All right, so, so we're talking about classes, right? Why do we talk about classes? Yeah, we talk about classes. So, IP addresses are grouped into classes. You have class A, class B, class C. So class A is made up of, it says uh, right here, um okay so class a starts from it's not internet. okay so class a goes from zero to 127 so if it's class a let me use this again here so for class a this part here if it's a class a network class a um in the class a the IP address, right? The IP address will be from zero to, oh, what am I doing? Zero to 127, right? That is the first part here, right? This first part. In the class A IP address, your network that's the network part right network part in the class a in the class a so if you look here so uh class a ip addresses if you count how many computers that's going to be right from 0 to 127 it's going to give you about right here it says total addresses it's going to give you about 2 million 2 million plus IP addresses in class A, right? That looks like 2 billion. Now, is it 2 billion? Oh, yeah, you're right. You're right. No, 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 no. Addresses per network. No, no, no. Oh. Sorry, it's not that. This is it here. Right here, right here. It's this one here. 16 million, right? 16 million in class A. Now, class A is for... Let me ask you guys, what kind of group or company or employer will need 16 million computers? The government. Exactly. The federal government. So the federal government or large companies like Amazon or Microsoft, right? Google, those guys have millions and millions of stuff happening might have their IP address, just the first part. The first part of that IP will be from zero to 127 when you see the IP address, okay? Now the next part, the next class is class B. Class B addresses, so this is about 16 million IP um, addresses. Then class B goes from, let's see, goes from 128 to 191. 
So 128 to 191. Okay, and that gives you about 65,000, 65,000, 65,000 um, computers. So that's for large organizations, not as big as the government and stuff, but, you know, universities and, you know, large companies, right, will have most probably class B IP addresses, okay? Then you have class C IP addresses, class C. Class C goes from 192 to 223. 192. This is very important stuff, guys. So I'm taking my time to give you as much as possible there. And Class C addresses are 256, just about 256 computers, right? So these are, so these Class are, C, are, these are single networks. Is that what you're saying? Class A... What do you mean? What do you mean single network? Okay. Uh, so these represent uh, collections of single networks for, or the government. You, the government is, it must have multiple networks. Um, yes. So like we said, right, if you have a local area network, right, remember, uh, let me, let I put that here. So a LAN, a local area network, has a max, max size right. of 255 computers, right? Right, right. That's the max you can get because of the IP uh, design. Mm -hmm. So you can have multiple of that, right? Like many times that, many times that. Yeah, so this to is... To make up a whole, to make up a bigger network. So class A, zero to a... Uh, class A, to six, 16 million what? 16 million lands? No, 16 million individual computer addresses. addresses. So it can be laptops, a combination of laptops, computers, servers, phones, you know, tablets, all the devices. I just said devices, 16 million devices. Sixteen million devices all belong to that one network. Oh, really? Okay. Yes, and of course they can have multi. They probably will have multiple subnets, multiple subnets, multiple subnets. Okay. Right. Now, if you're in class B, you have about sixty-five thousand devices. Uh -huh. You know, students' computers or company computers, branch offices. Things like that. Uh -huh. Now, if you're in class C, class C is the, like the smallest size, right? Class C, 256. Now, most of us fall into class C. Your home network is probably class C. No, class C is 192 uh, all the way to 223. Now, let me show you something. We looked at this yesterday. When I look at my IP, my, my public IP, what's my IP? Remember we did that yesterday? When I look at my IP here, let's see what my IP is. So we figure out what class it is. So give it a second here. Okay. Now look at my IP address, right? The IP starts with 73. So what class is my IP? Class A. Okay. Now why is it class A? Because I live in, I live in just my house with my family. So why is it class A? Must be university. Would it be a university? No, I'm not. No, I'm at home. I'm not tied to university right now. Anybody? Alex, why is it? Why is it in class A since I'm at home? Maybe uh, um, network. What do you have? Say it again, Anu. The network provider has that uh, that kind that many users. Exactly, the network provider, my ISP is Comcast, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm part of Comcast large network. Mm -hmm. So it's not it's not about it's not my house. Mm -hmm. I'm part of Comcast network. Mm -hmm. So that is Comcast 
public IP address, 73, suddenly in class A. Right? So when you see an IP address, this will give you an idea of what class it is, that IP address, right? Um, for example, if we look here at, you know, let's look for a university here, let's say a CMD. Let's look at a university in Indiana, right? Ping indiana.edu, a university in Indiana, right? Let's see what the, oh, sorry, I didn't do that correct. Indiana 1A. The edu. Indiana. edu. Okay, let's see. Okay, it's giving me the it's giving me the wrong version of that. Um, let's do that again. But in, why is it not pinging? Okay, let me ping somewhere else. Let me ping. Um, let's try something else. Let's try. UMass Boston, UMB.edu, edu. Okay, now look at UMass Boston, right? Uh, UMass Boston is 216.243.14.139. So what is that? What does that fall? Class C. It falls under class C, right? Yes. Because of the 216, that is class C. So, um, so that might that might actually that might be I don't know it might be a subnet because UMass Boston is probably in a much bigger I would think UMass Boston should be in class B but it tells you what class of IP you're looking at at that particular moment maybe the computer that we're pinging is in class C so the way networks are divided are very interesting you have to go deeper to see what actually is happening but that is a class C IP okay now, the last thing on this point, this is such a large subject, honestly. Um, the last topic here is uh, a PIPA, right? So yesterday, we talk, uh, on Monday, we talked about a PIPA. A PIPA is when there is no DHCP, right? When, uh, should I say two or more... PCs are connected, and when you connect to, like I showed you guys, right? When you connect, you know, you connect two computers, right? Mm -hmm. Using a cable or something, and you have no, you, there's no internet or whatever, but the computers are directly connected, right? Now, DHCP is supposed to give you IP addresses, but there's no DHCP because these computers are connected directly, right? Maybe for some kind of a experiment or some kind of a test. Because every computer now has to be on the internet, right? But let's just say when there is no internet, but you connect two computers or more. Now, for two computers to be able to communicate, they need to have IP addresses. But now we don't have we don't have internet, we don't have DHCP, so there's no IP address. So none of these ranges is going to work. None. So what happens is we have what we call a PIPA addresses. Right? Those IP it's a reserved set of IP addresses, right? That is the computer himself, the computers that are connected are going to automatically generate or get their own IP addresses, right? They're called a PIPA, they're reserved for when there is no internet, but two computers or more that are directly connected have to communicate. Where do they get the IP addresses from? They have to self-generate, get their own IPs. Those range of IP addresses are called a PIPA. Right now, the people addresses are in a class. Let's see if that chart has that information. Oh, let me see if I can find it here. It doesn't have it, but let me go. Let me go. Let me go research it somewhere else. 
are right here. Okay. Oh, right here. Come on, come on, come on. Okay. So our people addresses, let's see what it says here. Okay, so right here, he says, that's what I just, that's what we just talked about, right? If no DHCP server is present, right? If no DHCP server is currently available for whatever reason, the computer selects an IP address from a range of IP addresses. And this is the range, 164, sorry, 169, 254, uh, zero, zero to one, six, nine, two, five, four, two, five, five, two, five, five. So that's the range, right? So they're specially reserved IP addresses for when there is no, that is when you're not a part of a, of a network, just individual computers connected together, right? When you're not part of a larger network, the computers will automatically select their own IPs. And this is the range. Now you might notice that this range is from a certain class. What class is it from? I'm, not, I'm gonna pull this down. What class is this range from? Class B. 169. B. 169. B, class B. B. Class B. Right here. Class it's in this class, class B. Class B. Right? It's in the B class. So, so, so in class B, right in class b you have your a people addresses right as a it's like a you know a subsection of class b from 169 um that's it right here all right so you have class a here right zero to 127 Class B, 128 to 169, I mean 128 to 191. And inside Class B, you have a small range or a small section that is, um, so can you guys tell me how many computers are in that APIPA class? Zero to 255. It's just 255, 55, right? 000. No, 255, 255. Zero, you see, you can see, look at the host. The host is zero to 255. So you have 255 reserved 255. IP addresses. Yeah. You have 255 reserved addresses for this APIPA situation, right? When these computers are not connected. Now, when you are on APIPA, you can't go on the internet. There is no internet available. It's just for direct communication with other computers that you may be connected to. So you can't go on the internet with any private IPs or stuff like that, right? So all, the, all this stuff here looks like a lot. This is like a lot, right? Like I'm sure your, your brain is like, oh, this is like too much information, right? Alex, is there too much information? Yeah, it sure is. Well, you know, like I said, we spent about four months in college breaking down all these points, and we have to talk about it here in a week. Not enough time. But it's just giving you some basic concepts, you know, for the exam, just for you to have that basic foundation. So when you see it, you know, oh, I heard about this. I heard about these classes before. I heard about a PIPA before. I heard about the IEEE and all these protocols. I heard about this before. So you're kind of familiar with it. Okay. Um, um, all right. I have a question. Sure. Uh, question is, uh, so what's the purpose? Why, uh, why is it, uh, what's the purpose of breaking, breaking this down into classes? Why is that okay? A good so, idea? good question. 
So about 40 or 50 years ago, maybe about 50 years ago, in the 1970s anyway, uh, when the internet was not really, you know, there was really no internet then, the federal government decided, well, it looks like nobody's going to get on the internet because there was no internet, right? So it didn't look like there was going to be any internet activity. So they decided, okay, well, let's figure out a way because if you want to get on the internet, you need to have an IP address. So they wanted to figure out a way to manage the IP addresses. Like, okay, who do we give the IP addresses if anybody wants to go on the internet? Mm. It's like when you give out candy to kids. <laughs> you know, I don't know. It's like, well, who needs to go on the internet? Nobody wants to go on the internet except maybe the federal government or the military, right? So long time ago, they decided, well, if you're a very, very large organization, we're going to give you a lot more, right? You have a lot more, you know, the government or whoever. If you're a small to medium-sized organization, you have this many. If you're much smaller, you have a class C, right? And then you have your people. The problem was, at that time, like I said, nobody was getting on the internet. And so the total amount of IP addresses that were available, right, at that time, let's look at it. Let me show you. You guys might be surprised. Um, total IPv4 addresses. So look at it. This is the total amount of IP addresses that were created about 50 years ago. Four billion. Now, the question is, do we have more than four billion devices today that have to be on the internet? Probably. What do you guys think? Are, are these IP addresses enough for the whole world right now, for everybody? <laughs> what? No. They're not because, you know, there is an assumption or some kind of a statistics that if we have 7 billion people in the world, I'm just using my own conservative, you know, estimates here. So we have 7 billion people. Let's just say, like I said, there is no scientific proof to what I'm saying, but let's just say 20% of the whole population have devices, right? Maybe more, maybe less, I don't know. But I said 20%. So 20% of 7 billion, so 7, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, right? So what is 20%? Uh, what? Minus 80% is equal to, all right, so about 1.5 billion people on Earth right, have about what? What? Four or five devices? Right? You have a computer, you have a laptop, you have a phone, you have some gadget in your house. So if we use this number and say the average person has five devices times five, right? We're back to seven billion. So we don't have enough, <laughs> all right? So far back at that time, at that time, right, they thought nobody's getting on the internet. It's like when you think of electric cars right now, right? Very few people have electric cars. So if they have, so it was like, oh, well, if everybody had electric cars, but not a lot of people have electric cars or self-driving cars self-driving cars so at that time nobody was getting on the internet there was no internet like that so some people believe that we have exhausted this number that there are no more ip addresses and that is why we now have the next version which is ipv6 Oh, sorry. Total 
Now look at this here. Let's compare the next version of IPv6 addresses. Um, so can you see what it is? Can you see what it says here? This is how many IPv6 addresses we're going to have. You see that? Yeah. How many is that? There's so many. That three forty trillion 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 IP addresses. <laughs> Three forty trillion. Yeah, three forty trillion, 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 trillion. I mean, compare that to four, four, what four billion? Now we're talking about three forty billion, trillion, trillion, trillion. Because now you have so many devices, so many, you know, computers. Excuse me, so many different, you know, um, things. That need to be on the internet your watch your phone your headset your exercise equipment your tv your maybe even this maybe this bottle of water one day we need to be on the internet right or something who knows right everything is on the internet and for you to be on the internet you need to have an ip address so the next version of ip addresses is ipv6 it's still a work in progress is going to take a while for us to get to that point but ipv6 have has a larger larger address you know address um should i say space and that's what you see here so that's how we got to this point they came up with an idea and they thought okay you guys are going to need this stuff it's like imagine the federal government saying every single apartment and home should have um, electric charger for your cars, right? People are like, really? I don't need that, right? I don't need that because you, you can imagine that every single house is going to have that kind of stuff, right? Maybe that's how it was then. Maybe that's how it was, right? So 50 years later, we've exhausted the number. And so they came up with another idea for more and more IP addresses. So what happens when uh, I throw my computer out? It's, you know, it's, it's, I buy a new computer, get rid of the old one. Uh, what happens to that IP address that for the old one? It just gets, it just gets assigned to another, com to another computer. Oh. In fact, if you have, Let's say you have two or three computers at home, and let's say you shut down one computer, your IP address can be recycled, right? I mean, no two devices can use the same IP, but if one IP is idle, I mean, maybe not at home because you only have a small network. Let's say like a busier place. Let's say like a, on campus, right? Where students are coming and going, you put on a computer, you put it off, the IP addresses will always be recycled. If this computer gets shut down, that IP might be assigned to another computer that gets started up. Mm. So that network, they have a number of IP addresses to manage for the network. Mm. And sometimes that's also why they create subnets. It kind of extends the IP addresses when you have a subnet, because now you change some configuration of your IP addresses. So in a way, you kind of extend it, right? Um, so you know what you know what we're gonna do, right? Uh, so we haven't done this before, but we have to do this. So we only have about, I think for real, we only have about two or three chapters. Um, yeah, I don't think chapter ten and eleven. I, I, I don't know if it's really covered in the exam. So I'll say that. Um, Chapter eight and nine are the biggest, you know, are like the main part of the exam. We can touch, uh, this is like chapter 10 is best practices. Chapter 11 is about, you know, doing business and stuff like that, all kinds of things. So, so we're going to split this um, chapter eight into two. We're going to continue next week and finish up next week. So you guys don't have any assignments this week, right? Because... There is no way, I mean, I knew it that we couldn't complete this particular topic in one week. So we're going to do it for two weeks. 
we're going to continue next week, and then we're going to go to the next um, the next set of questions, which will be where is it? Hmm. Somewhere there. So we got up to where is it? Come on. You did question four in, uh, in the review. Yeah, we questions. got up to question five. Yeah, because you know each of the questions has so much to explain right. <laughs> before we get yeah. to the actual answers, right? And if I just say, well, here's the answer, you know, you're like, well, how do you, what do you mean by that's the answer? So we have to explain all the different terms and parts of the question right. so you know how we got to the answer, yeah. right? Uh, so, so this question, this question five, right? Now, if you look at it, right? If you look at it, look at the IP address it's talking about here. You see the IP address? Yeah. So what I, what what range does that IP address fall into? B. See one six nine. Plus B. A people, a people address. Exactly, it's an a people IP address. So it tells you that there is no DHCP server. Well, let's see what the answer says. Let's be sure. Question five. Mm. All right. So you see that. So it tells you that the DHCP server, right, um, what to say there, what? Uh, configures the uh, TCP IP information. If the server is not available, your computer will automatically Mama. configure itself with an IP address, which starts at 169.254, right? Uh, so it says the answer is B, right? B, yeah. So the answer is not this one here. The answer is B. So that's why I had to explain all that stuff for you so you understand how what, what this number means or else it wouldn't make sense to you at all. Maybe it still doesn't even make sense to you, but maybe a little bit, right, Anu? Does it make sense a little bit? Yeah, yes. You explained a lot today. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we don't know all these. So, yeah. Um, so, because, yeah. So, all these little things here, all, they all mean different things, and that's why it's good for us to break it down as much as possible. All right. So, um, Lynn, how do you feel about not having any assignment this week? Are you sad? <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say why we are have a class in the afternoon why why not change in the morning this class i think this class is important because it should be changing in the morning well i think get the said again said again i want you class the time change in the morning not afternoon oh sam Hi. that's not possible anymore it's too late she wants to have the class in the morning it's too late it's too late. We already scheduled Lynn, it. Lynn, you can Lynn, you can come by yourself in the morning. Only you. Uh, actually, she has my class in the morning. Oh well. <laughs> so Lynn, you want to have <laughs> Lynn, you want to have this class in, you want to have this class in the morning. Customer service always in the morning. Yeah. I think I, that, should, I think I should choose the computer class in the morning and, and then change the uh, customer service in the afternoon. Okay, we'll we'll think about it. <laughs> why? Why 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 do you Lynn, why do you want to do that? Um because we didn't like that like after lunch. <laughs> what what did you eat for no. lunch? What did you eat for lunch? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's do the um, let's do the attendance. Um, so we're going to continue this next week, right? So you can just um, you can you know watch the. Let me stop. Let me stop the recording. <laughs>